is going on today guys? Welcome back. So, the first video, or one of the first videos on this channel about a little over two years ago was an entire walk around video of the entire build on our 2005 truck. So I do have playlists for each and every vehicle that we build. Every single mod uh, from start to finish in chronological order is in a playlist. So what I wanna do today, I get tons and tons of questions. Not everybody watches every single video. So what I wanna do is compile all of that into this one video talking about all of the mods, where the truck is at, reference this in time, two years later, where the truck was, where it's at now, put it in that playlist, kind of be the marker for the playlist. Uh, so that's what we're gonna be doing today. Again, I get tons of questions about specific stuff on this. I even put a post up on my Instagram asking for people to ask their specific mod questions of what they don't know about this thing that they wanna know about. So we're gonna answer those after I get done running through everything. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna jump right into it. So let's start with the outside here. I do get a couple questions uh, about the paint code. This is the factory paint code of this truck. It is just the normal black. As you can see right here, paint code, that's where your paint code is on the door if you didn't know. It's PX8, which is just the normal black. It's not the metallic black. Uh, this truck actually has been repainted uh, quite a long time ago. Uh, when I first got the truck, it actually got keyed. Uh, all the way down front back all over so it was actually repainted so it's not the original paint the bed has been fixed we've done the uh, wheel well fix on this truck uh, when we did the front end swap uh, we had all of that repainted mirrors and handles were really the doors are really the only thing that's left from that original paint job many many years ago so uh, it's not all original paint by any means but uh, it is really nice so uh, wheel well liners I'm just I'm just kind of picking out things as we're going along uh, but I will get to everything the wheel well liners are a Mopar part number that is discontinued I have searched I have tried I don't know where to get them guys uh, I used to get them on eBay they are not available anymore so I do not know where you guys can even get them they're not available anymore Let's move right to the wheels. American Force Evo, 22 by 12s. Offset is a negative 40 on these. Uh, tire size, 285, 45, 22. Uh, measures a little bit under a 33, 12, 5. Uh, they are a little bit smaller than a true 33. Lug nuts are a, the brand is Metal Lugs. Uh, lug nuts on there. They're all right. Uh, the powder coating finish on them definitely uh, not the highest. The other brand that I've used before in the past are True Spike lug nuts. Uh, I would actually favor those a little bit over the metal lugs. The metal lugs are a one piece. The True lugs, uh, the True Spike lug nuts are a two piece, kind of with interchangeable caps. So uh, that is the wheel and tire setup on here. Brake setup is just factory brakes, nothing special, uh, nothing crazy. We will be switching that this winter though uh, to something a little bit more drag friendly so we can run a little bit smaller tires, but for right now, they are the factory brakes front and rear. Uh, exterior wise, so we'll walk around here. Uh, roll pan from LMC, tail lights, just factory tinted tail lights. Um, the stack I get a lot of questions about. Uh, this is a FTE diesel uh, stack and a stack kit. So that is their base plate. It's actually flanged uh, on the bottom and the top. It kind of shoots through the bed. Nice, really nice clean look uh, and really nice to adapt to underneath the truck. This is actually a Grand Rock uh, clamp. This is not a FTE clamp. This is a Grand Rock stack clamp. It's actually for a big rig. It has studs that poke through the behind here. Um, you can kind of sneak your hands in here, but that's a really nice look. Kind of keeps it from shaking around. Really clean look. Um, let's see here. Tint setup. Everybody wants to know about tint. Uh, so side window, side window, and back window are all 5%, and then another layer of 20% on top of that. Yes, it is ridiculously dark. I don't recommend it. You can you cannot see out of it in at nighttime. That's for sure. 20% on the windshield. Um, I've kind of been over painted mirrors and door handles. Um, it really takes some uh, sandable primer sanding that down to kind of get rid of the uh, the rough finish on that. So um, ex uh, hoods. Everybody always wants to know about the hoods. These hoods are they're like from key parts uh they're kind of like an automotive like wholesaler for body parts you can get these on jegs and summit they've actually come down in price i don't even know if they're 500 bucks i think they're like 450 three something and then the hundred dollar shipping they, they get you for but you can get them on jegs and or summit they have body parts on there the front end swap so yes this is a 2005 truck 
but we swapped it to the 06 to 09 front end, which the swap includes uh, the hood can stay the same, but you will need a different grill and grill support that mounts to uh, the underneath of the hood. The whole support needs to change. So those two things, fenders, headlights, front bumper. Now I did change all of the bracketry behind this, but a lot of people do say, and Mark has done it as well, you can put the Laramie bumper over your SLT uh, chrome section. You just have to take off the top and the bottom and kind of shove it over. That's not what I did. I didn't really have great luck with that. I ended up doing the more expensive and changing everything route, uh, the hooks, the brackets, everything. Uh, you can get the bumper covers off eBay, off LMC. Uh, just make sure they are CAPA, I believe is the term, uh, certified. That's like the automotive aftermarket certification for higher quality aftermarket stuff. So uh, headlights and fog lights, these are just eBay specials. They're eBay special tinted ones. Uh, again, you guys know that I really, I don't daily drive this truck. So a lot of the stuff can stay a little bit nicer because the miles are really kept down. Uh, this truck only has 80,000 original miles on here. Um, everything on the interior here is still very, very clean, still smells like a new truck almost inside here. So uh, we'll go over some of the gauges. Um, well, I guess we can move to the interior after we're done with the exterior. Um, I believe they are recon uh, cab lights. All right, so interior wise, not really a whole lot. Um, I did see a couple questions already in the uh, direct messages on Instagram about maybe changing the interior up. I think that would be cool. I've always thought about doing uh, maybe like SRT bucket seats or uh, newer like fourth gen seats in here. I don't know if I'd go as far to change the uh, dash out really, but I think the newer seats or maybe some high end racing seats or something like that would be really cool in here. Um, but other than that, really, we have ISPRO gauges down here. This is actually an auto meter uh, gauge mount for the 0305s. There used to be a cubby hole in here. Uh, this kind of just sandwiches between that, but we have fuel pressure pressure, rail pressure, trans temp, and then up here, uh, this is also just a simple auto meter universal mount that I have mounted behind here. We've kind of done it a little bit nicer with the, uh, you can see, well, maybe you can't see, uh, we wire loomed some stuff in the back to run the wires through. But again, up here we have uh, exhaust back pressure, uh, boost number one and boost number two uh, when we were running the triple setup on here so I could uh, see the uh, overall total boost and then the uh, low side boost so I could kind of see what each charger was doing. And then down here we have uh, exhaust pyrometer. All of the paddle shifter, the Sparco steering wheel, all of this stuff was from our man, Mr. Muldoon from Muldoon's Diesel. Uh, again, this kind of all kind of goes into the transmission setup uh, that we we have going on but other than that guys interior wise not really a whole lot going on don't have any speakers anything like that so that pretty much wraps up the interior uh, one thing I did forget to mention suspension wise uh, suspension wise we have a lot of the leafs removed underneath here we're only running three leaf springs one little block underneath that, that's as low as it really is. Uh, Bilstein shocks all the way around, nothing really crazy. Uh, so the rear is a little bit lower. On the 05, we are running cow tracks, um, obviously powder coated. Cow tracks really tie into the front part of your leaf pack, so you do have to do quite a bit of modifications to those. A little bit more uh, track setup, you can daily drive them. Um, obviously, I drive this on the street, no problem, but that's what we're running on the 05. The front setup here, a lot of people ask about this. We have the stock coils with one wrap cut out of them. So yes, they are cut coils. Um, so it's one wrap cut out of them. I will try to find the uh, Bilstein shock part number that we have. We have fleece uh, shock tower delete plates on there. We have BD uh, front sway bar links. We have the upgraded 07 and a half steering on this guy. Factory control arms in the front. Uh, we do probably need to swap those. This wheel and tire setup actually does hit ever, ever so slightly. I actually was articulated to going around a turn or something, and I caught my fender here just a little bit. Um, if I trimmed all of that and kind of pushed it back, that really wouldn't be a problem. These are actually untrimmed fenders. You can actually probably push that back right now. So really not bad. I would say out of clearing them, it is like a nine out of 10 that it clears. Uh, it really just only snags just a little bit. Uh, it only takes once though, but exterior wise guys, I think that is pretty much 
pretty much it. Again, if you guys have any questions, I will do my best to get in the comment section and kind of go over everything if you have any more specific questions. Again, some of you guys on Instagram might have already asked those, so we'll get to them in a little bit here. So working our way drivetrain wise, we'll start from the back and work our way to the front. Um, we have our auxiliary transmission cooler mounted back here. You can see that that is a derail double row. I think it's like a 30 or 40 row cooler. Don't mind our MagTech rear diff cover. Mr. Uh, Mr. Banks has been working hard on something that's a little bit better. I know you guys, I know a lot of you guys follow along with that whole diff cover deal, um, but got a MagTech diff cover for now. Uh, factory axles in this guy, nothing really special. 373 gears, everything is factory as far as axle wise goes. Uh, where we have changed up before, down here is the rear drive shaft. I'm gonna give you guys some light down here. So the rear drive shaft, we've switched over to 1480 joints, front and rear, um, well, front and rear joints, I should say. It is a DOM, four inch uh, DOM tubing, heavy wall drive shaft using 1480 joints. That is actually a GM style um, flange on the rear diff there to get to 1480. Same thing on the front. I don't have those part numbers. I bet you if you Googled them, you'd find them in the forums. But 1480 joints front and back on the rear drive shaft. You can kind of see here our air dog is hiding up in here somewhere. Got our air dog 4G 200 on this truck. Got our bean sump. All right, we can kind of see a little bit better on this side. So you can kind of see the exhaust right here. It's four inch from the turbo all the way back till it merges into the five inch pipe going into the stack. Uh, transfer case, a lot of guys ask what kind of transfer case is in this thing. It is the factory transfer case for the truck. The only thing that has been changed in the transfer case is the input shaft that adapts to the big output shaft in the transmission. So um, really a lot of guys run these on really high horsepower trucks, even higher than, way higher than where we're at, 15, 16, 2000. A lot of guys are still running the factory T case. Really the only thing that I know that people change uh, really is the joint coming out of the uh, transfer case and the input shaft on the transfer case. Other than that, pretty factory stuff. So transmission wise, you guys know that we run a Muldoon's stage 75,000. No, I'm just kidding. It's not a 75,000, but it's a stage four, stage five. He does a really good job of describing all of his, is this camera still rolling? Okay. Just got to make sure we're still rolling here. Um, his website explains all of the stages. It is the top of the line, the best you can get. Uh, we are using a Suncoast converter and a Suncoast input shaft. Suncoast uh, hooked us up with all of the uh, PCS stuff for all of the paddle shifters, all the controller, stuff like that. So it's kind of a uh, Muldoon Suncoast unit. Uh, nothing but the best there, um, again, the paddle shifters uh, are way more than what you see here. The valve body has been changed out uh, to do that. All of the control stuff for the paddle shifters is underneath here. Kind of has its own separate computer system now that kind of runs the transmission. So quite an involved process, but the transmission uh, has been nothing but beautiful since we got it back from him the last time with all the Suncoast goodies in there. Um, moving up to the engine, you guys already know it, Freedom Racing Engine Stage 2 6.7 engine. So it is a, an entire 6.7 before. When we had the triples, it was a 6.4, 6.4 displacement. Uh, that is basically taking a 6.7 Cummins engine block using a 5.9 crank. Uh, this is an entire 6.7 engine crank, block, head, everything, it's all 6.7 liter stuff. So um, the specifics on the engine, it's uh, you know, we kind of been over that. That's a pretty detailed explanation. I, again, I'm try, trying to run through this as quick as possible so this isn't a 40 minute video. Um, I'll throw some links down below if you guys want like super specific engine details. We go over all of that. It's got Carrillo rods, um, no side draft on this, but it does have bigger, uh, really nice valves in the cylinder head. So it does have oversized valves, no side draft. All right, so let's go over some of the parts that are attached to the actual engine. Over here, we'll start on the passenger side. Uh, you guys know that we love Steed Speed manifolds. We use them, nothing but the best from those guys. Uh, Steed Speed T4 manifold. Uh, this, we've had many different turbo configurations on here. This is the latest one that made uh, 940 horsepower. It is a 476 uh, 8711 
uh, turbo. It is a Borg SXE unit. The turbos that we've had on here in the past before was a Fleece Performance 468, which made 900, and a Fleece 472, uh, which we never really dynoed with that on there. So a uh, little bit of the bigger setup on here now, but uh, definitely could go back to the 72, no problem. Um, that's pretty much as far as that. We've also got underneath the turbo there, we've got fleece performance drain stuff going on. We made our own uh, oil feed line out of some vibrant stuff. Um, got the fleece uh, coolant uh, bypass over here. Probably saying a lot, sorry about that. Uh, we got Adam Aquino's uh, coolant pipe here, this really nice coolant pipe, got rid of the factory one, really, really nice piece. Got all of his like pulleys down here for uh, some of the AC delete stuff, all of that makes the belt routing really, really nice. Uh, over on this side here, have a fleece performance dual CP3 kit, uh, two of their 6.7 uh, CP3K pumps, so again, all 6.7 stuff. Uh, got their new CP3 wheel here, super, super nice. Um, 6.7 rail on here. Uh, the engine, as far as fueling setup, you guys know, um, AirDog 200 feeding up here to the uh, dual fueler setup and also SNS 100% over injectors inside the engine there. Got our banks. Uh, Monster Ram here uh, with their intercooler piping and stuff. This is actually a on three performance intercooler. I've had this for quite a quite a long time. It was really the only three and a half inch outlet intercooler I could find that was polished at the time. Still has the stock rad in it with a pair of Flexolite uh, fans directly for that. Uh, that's pretty much a bolt-on part as well. Uh, runs a single battery, uh, really just deleted all of the battery stuff, the crossover cable, the grounds, um, and really just one run the one main battery here. Again, really for the driving that I do, uh, has never really, really been a problem. It does need a new battery though, because we'd have to jumpstart it quite a bit, but uh, before this, uh, single battery is not really a big deal. I know I get asked about this valve cover all the time. This is actually a 03 to 05 marine valve cover that says Cummins on it. Uh, really only works for 03 to 05 because we still have the injector plugs in the side of the uh, lower valve cover there. Um, so really this won't work for 06 and up engines. It's really 03, 05 marine covers. Um, our man Mikey G can get you one of these or I think the guys at Freedom Racing Engines can get you one of these as well. Um, so that's... That's pretty much it. I think we're going to jump right into the specific questions. I don't think, uh, you know, I've been around this thing so long, I forget about all the little detail stuff. Uh, that's really the basic overview of it. Like I said, the truck makes 940 proven on the dyno right now uh, with 1,800 foot-pounds of torque. Uh, ran a best time of this year at a 10.5 quarter mile time and the best 60 foot that we've gotten out of the truck, exactly how it's set up right now, is a 141. The truck is full weight, no cage. Um, again, we'll go over another video of what the plans are for this uh, winter time. We are gonna be making some pretty big changes. Um, I know a lot of you guys still wanna see this thing tow. We still do have the gooseneck ball in here. That will be a video. I promise we will hook this thing up to the gooseneck and tow with it. Um, I know I did see one DM asking about the drag wheels and tires that we ran this year. So these are 18 by 12 fuel hostages uh, with a set of Hoosier DR2. Uh, I believe these are radials, drag radial right there. 325, 45, 18 is what we have been using. This is a, this is probably the most common wheel and tire setup for guys that are really looking to uh, improve track times uh, and, and kind of use factory third gen brakes. You get, again, you have to go with something like an 18 by 12 uh, to kind of clear all that stuff. Unless you find, there are some other setups with like 17s and stuff, because I believe these things will still clear 17s, but that is a pretty common 18 by 12 with that Hoosier setup on there. So um, I think we're gonna jump right into the questions, guys. We've probably, this video is probably already getting super, super long. All right, guys, I am going to try and fly through as many uh, direct messages as I can and try and rattle off some of these questions. I don't have any specific order. Uh, before the channel and triples, what your what was your setup? How many miles did you buy the truck with? I believe the truck with. Um, I bought this truck with like 20 or 30,000 miles. Um, I know I've seen a lot of questions. This, the 05 was my first truck. I bought it when I was 19 and I got my first good job right out of tech school. I went to WyoTech out in uh, near Pittsburgh uh, for automotive and business. As soon as I got my first good job right out of school, I went and bought this thing. Had 20 or 30,000 miles on it. Um, I think I've owned it for like a little bit over 10 years. It was before the diesel craze got insanely crazy. Um, I believe I paid like 18 grand for this truck. Um, 
and now they are just out of control. Um, so hopefully that answers some of that. Um, this the setup before uh, with the triples. Um, it was a 488 and two 476s with 450% overs, two 12 millimeter pumps. Um, was just was just crazy. What cam is in it? Um, I believe it's a Hamilton cam. Again, I'll post the video down below going all, all over the specific engine details. That was a great video. This one says, do you plan on throwing all of the boost at it to see how tough a Freedom Racing engine is? Um, well, I mean, this, this is a street engine. It's not really made to handle over 11 or 1200 horsepower that's what they really have the next platform up from that when you get into a sleeved engine uh right now we're out of fuel on this engine if we got bigger injectors we could make more power uh but this engine was really designed to kind of be uh the best of both worlds for the guy who wants to uh, make decent power drive it on the street um not really with the ultimate horsepower goal in mind so we probably uh, will not do that. Uh, this is a tuning question. Uh, the guys at Higher Power Performance tune all of the trucks uh, that we have. Um, this, even though we changed to a 6.7 engine, uh, this is still the uh, 5.9 ECM uh, in the truck. All of the wiring, all of the computer stuff is the same. Uh, really the only thing you have to make sure is that the injector that you put in here um, is the correct bowl for your the spray pattern for the bowl of the piston that you have. Uh, that's the only thing you really have to worry about when it comes to any of that. Uh, this question is about wheel bearings on deep dish wheels. Um, really, I just get wheel bearings from Napa, like the SKF for Timken bearings, uh, just a high quality wheel bearing. These aren't like a super, super crazy offset. Um, I've had 12 wides on my 08 uh, for the longest, longest time. I've never really had an issue with wheel bearings going out like insanely fast. Um, just a good high quality unit, I think you'll be fine. Um, turbo and injectors we went over, SNS injectors, um, fleece chargers. A couple questions about the triples that we had on it before. Um, I really didn't have a problem with them with the other engine setup. It spooled pretty fast. Um, just a lot more moving parts. And when you have more moving parts, there's a lot more. Is this thing? Oh. The camera's getting a little hot, it's flashing at me. Um, I really didn't have like too many, too many complaints other than uh, basically took up this entire thing. Um, they were they were a light switch, you know? They were made for really, really high horsepower. When they started to spool, the thing just wanted to go. But they, it's still, I mean, you could still street, street drive that. It depends on what your version of street drive that was. But I say that the single charger is definitely more driver friendly, um, still hits hard. Um, I would say if I had one versus the other, I think a bigger single charger would be would be where I would land on that. Would you ever wrap the truck? Yes, I would. Um, I'm not saying that that's definitely going to happen, but I would I would think that would be very very cool. Um, trying to do something different this day and age is uh, is getting harder and harder with everybody doing some crazy stuff. So um, my man Ryan Snyder and I might be planning something. That's all I'm going to say. Uh, gear ratio in the 05 373s. Um, ba -ba 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 -ba. Uh, what clutch am I running? Well, this is automatic, but we do have a uh, stick in the 08 and we are running South Bend. We always run South Bend stuff in all of our builds. Go through a lot of these. Uh, if you guys don't follow me on Instagram, you definitely should. I Before this question uh, about the 05, I, I, was, I put up a post about looking for a second gen. So I get a, there's a lot of there's a lot of intermingling going on here. So uh, I am looking for a second gen, um, if you guys know of any. Here's the requirements though. I'm looking for an 01 to 02. Um, as long as it's a single cab, it'll be okay, but a preferably an 01 to 02 single cab, black, clean, no rust, don't give me anything rusty, single cab, four wheel drive, second gen. Um, I want it to be manual, but here's the deal. If the truck was already a manual um, and the transmission's out of it, or if it's automatic and the transmission's out of it, or if the engine's out of it, I'll take on a project too. I just really want a clean body and it has to be a single cab, has to be black, and I don't want any rust. Um, but other than that, it can, it can or cannot have a motor or a transmission, uh, it can be a project, whatever, just the body has to be clean. How many miles does it have? Um, I think we're up to like 80, 81 or 82 right now. Okay, what do I get for gas mileage? No idea. All of the smiles. Rim and tire suspension setup. Oh, and on the first end. We will be doing these for the other trucks. That's my goal to kind of do these uh, kind of videos to put a stamp in time. This is where the setup was. Here it is now. Put it in the playlist to kind of mark 
uh, so when you so in the future if people have questions be like hey I answered all of the questions in that video what was the first purpose of the O5 and how did it evolve into what it is now. So again, the first, when I got out of school, um, I think I had a car at the time, got rid of the car, bought the 05, that was my daily driver. Didn't have anything else other than that. Uh, when I bought the 08, then it kind of came a little bit more of a toy that I could take it apart, not worry about driving it to work every day, but it started its life and was that way for uh, a couple years. Uh, drove it all through the winters and everything else. Um, so I don't know how it stayed that clean. I have no idea because I wasn't very diligent about cleaning it, but it is very rust free, but it was daily driven and evolved uh, into what it is now by just, you know, I think the first thing I did was put a transmission in it, uh, put a lift pump on it, put a tune in it, um, and it basically snowballed from there to uh, the ridiculousness that it is right now. <laughs> Black Hammer 6.0. On a scale of one to Bald Eagle, how much freedom do you feel when you put the pedal to the metal? I mean, I would say like a whole family of Bald Eagles probably is, is, is how much I feel. <laughs> R underscore D-I-E-V-A 85. Uh, I won't say the word, but it says uh, F. Well, it's, the, the word starts with an F. Uh, MP, MPG, what is panties per gallon? Panties dropped per gallon. That'd be all of them. Diffs, both front and rear, factory, limited slip or aftermarket. The, like I said, the, uh, even the front axle completely uh, completely stock. Um, it does have a limited slip in the rear, but I don't know this for sure. I think it's getting a little weak. Sometimes uh, it does do a one tire fryer, which is not okay. It <laughs> time does two wheel um, but I've been really thinking about putting at least a true track uh, with maybe some Yukon uh, axles in the rear especially for next year for sure with what we have planned uh, but for now everything is factory uh, a lot of I see a couple of these how much money I have put into the 05 to make it as badass as it is now and that is a question that I honestly have no idea uh, if I tried to tally all that up, I might need a couple boxes of tissues, but uh, I really don't think about that a whole lot. Uh, how much horsepower does it make? Uh, went over that. 940 was the highest this year, which I think is still a little low. I think it's definitely like a 950, 960, but um, that's not what the uh, the thing said. So are you looking to make more power with the truck? That's a always. Hey guys, I tried to scroll through pretty much all of them. I think we pretty much hit everything. The only thing that I saw that I did not cover was the wiring in the truck. And I've actually had a couple people ask me this. Uh, if you guys look, normally there's wiring that runs across the top of the uh, the cowl here. Uh, that is inside of the wiper cowl. Um, as you can see right here, I kind of went right through, uh, drilled a couple holes in the cowl, stuffed the wiring up through here. So it is all inside of there. And then comes down uh, through here so not really uh, a terribly hard job to do um, just drill some holes kind of stuff it up in there um, the way I kind of did it was cut a little bit right here and kind of fold it up into there because the bigger connectors are right there but it does give it a much nicer cleaner look underneath here can't really see a whole lot I've tried to clean up a lot of the wiring underneath here uh, as best I can definitely not uh, battleship six seven uh, worthy but <laughs> it does the job that's for sure again guys if I missed your question, I apologize. I tried to get through a lot of the 05 truck specific specific questions uh, as much as I could. So again, if you do have any other further ones, I'll hit them down below. Um, that's gonna do it, guys. Again, this was really just a placeholder for where the truck is at now in the history of where it's going and where it's been. Uh, I appreciate you guys uh, listening, hanging on, uh, and that's gonna do it. Tomorrow we have some more first-gen content coming at you. Uh, we did run into our first couple issues uh, last night. So we're going to go over those, fix those up, um, and we have some more hood stack stuff coming for that tomorrow. So make sure you guys stay tuned for that. Hit the like button before you leave. Subscribe if you have not already, and I will see you guys tomorrow. See ya.